Hey guys, I'm Hop. Thank you for tuning in to TFB TV. I am out at the range with the new Anderson Manufacturing A4 Dissipator. This rifle was announced at the NRA annual meeting this year, and as of this recording, these are now available and shipping from Anderson. When we talk about the specs and configuration of this rifle, some of you are going to say, finally, a real dissipator. And some of you are going to say, that's not a real dissipator. And you're all correct for a variety of reasons. So let's talk about what a dissipator actually is. The story of the dissipator starts with the Colt 605, which was the first attempt to make a carbine-length AR-15. There are no free-to-use images of the Colt 605 on the internet, so instead enjoy these screenshots from a TFB article about the since-discontinued Brownells BRN 605. Colt took the standard model of AR-15 at the time and shortened the barrel as far as they possibly could without making any other substantial changes. The end result was a 15-inch barreled variant of the AR-15 that did not work. Vanishingly small numbers of Colt 605s were fielded in Vietnam by special forces units before the adoption of the M16, but they didn't stick around for long because, as I mentioned, the Colt 605 did not work. A few decades later, Bushmaster introduced a rifle called the Dissipator. As far as I know, that's where the term Dissipator is actually from. The Bushmaster Dissipator had a 16-inch barrel for legal reasons, but it still had the rifle-length handguards and fixed front sight base. However, the front sight base on the Bushmaster Dissipator was a dummy. The real gas system was carbine-length, with a low-profile gas block hidden under the handguards. The problem with the Colt 605 was one of dwell time. If you shorten the barrel without changing the length of the gas system, you're trying to do more work in less time, since once the bullet leaves the barrel, there is no more gas pressure to drive the action. You can open up the gas port to get more gas into the system faster, but that'll only get you so far. Most modern dissipators are like the Bushmaster. They're typically updated to a mid-length gas system, but the real gas block is still hidden under the handguard. The Anderson A4 dissipator, though, does have a proper rifle-length gas system. There are some theoretical advantages to doing it this way. To start with, it's way more interesting. The Bushmaster dissipator is just an M4 forgery in Vietnam cosplay. Pairing a 16-inch barrel with a rifle-length gas system and a full-length stock and rifle buffer system creates an interesting recoil impulse. Rifle-length buffer systems tend to be a little smoother than carbine-length buffers due to spring compression rates or some nerd shit like that. In addition, the longer the gas system is on a rifle, the lower the pressure is at the gas port. The Anderson A4 is a complete lineup of fixed front sight base retro rifles. If you're my age or older, calling the A4 retro probably makes your chest feel tight, but I hate to break it to you, 1998 was 25 years ago. The series includes a full-length M16A4 style rifle, the A4 short rifle with an 18-inch barrel, and the A4 dissipator. These rifles are built around a forged receiver set with flat top A4 style uppers, A2 pistol grips, A2 rifle length stocks, A2 clamshell handguards, and A2 birdcage flash hiders. Hey, the M16A2 got a lot of stuff right. On the inside, we find pretty much everything we expect from a budget AR. The bolt carrier is M16 profile, nitride finished with a 9310 steel bolt head. The charging handle and all the small parts are basic mil spec style, nothing out of the ordinary. This rifle has a decent enough trigger out of the box. It's kind of a slicked up GI style trigger, and surprisingly, it's not just a rebranded Schmid. But it feels decent enough. Trigger snobs will still hate it. Everybody else won't notice or care. The Dissipator sports a 1 in 8 twist barrel made of 4150 steel with a nitride finish. The Dissipator barrel is nominally a government profile, and it's close, but not quite. We'll come back to this. The Anderson A4 rifles all come with Magpul MBUS backup iron sights, which is a very sensible choice, but it would be cooler if they came with detachable carry handles, even if that drove the price up by another 50 bucks. I think that's the look more guys are going for with these. Okay, but does it work? The rifle length gas system gimmick isn't worth a whole lot if you can't make it reliable. Well, it's a balancing act. In our shooting, the A4 Dissipator was totally reliable. We shot cheap, lower-pressure 223 brass-cased ammo and full-pressure 556 ammo with a mix of metal GI mags and Magpul mags. Ejection was consistent but a bit on the anemic side, and it didn't fail to feed or lock back. It's an interesting rifle to shoot because <laughs> it sort of feels like a rifle with a muzzle brake on it, even though this just has an A2 birdcage. But it has, uh, yeah, a bit of that sort of surprisingly flat recoil impulse. We even put a binary trigger in it just to make getting through the ammo a little bit faster. And that's just anything but controllable. 
My finger hurts. Yeah, it's slapping you, isn't it? My finger hurts and is tired. Did I outrun the trigger? You might have. Yep. Now that's the gamer finger we were hoping for. We didn't shoot any steel case because I haven't seen any steel case ammo for sale in a long time. I think recent world events might have ended our brief flirtation with two ammo. I do think the A4 Dissipator will be more affected by fouling than standard gas system and barrel length combinations that tend to be more fault tolerant. Out of the box, it is not overgassed. Even with full power ammunition, ejection is consistent and tends towards the 3.30 or 4 o'clock. Reliable enough to be trustworthy, absolutely. Just don't neglect to rehydrate it with fresh 5W30 now and then. I mentioned that the barrel profile doesn't seem to be a true government or A2 profile. It has more meat on the back end than a proper government barrel, and the barrel diameter behind the gas block is slightly larger than a government barrel. It's not a heavy, SOCOM, or bull barrel profile, but it is a tiny bit bigger. Why does that matter? Because none of the GWAT era barrel mounted accessory rails fit. I tried to mount an old school Pac 4 slash Pac 2 barrel clamp mount and an NVEC number 16 pick rail mount to the A4 dissipator, and they came so close to fitting, but the screws don't quite reach, which kind of killed my idea of a Fallujah dissipator build. If it wasn't for that little stumbling block, I think the A4 dissipator would be perfect as an alternate history dissipator. And I think that's how Anderson pitched it initially. What if M16A4s got the dissipator treatment in the mid-2000s? What if the Second Battle of Fallujah dragged on longer and the Marines got sick of clearing houses with full-length M16s? I guess you can still do something like that with a drop-in quad rail and some kind of era-appropriate optic, maybe an aimpoint CCO if you're boring, or a loophole Mark IV CQT if you're cool. The real killer is going to be finding a PEC-2, especially one that works with no missing parts. Good luck. Overall, I think the Anderson Dissipator is a pretty cool rifle, especially if you consider the novelty factor and the price point. These things are selling for $600 direct from Anderson, which is a great deal considering the pace of inflation and the fact that the AR market is kind of getting away from itself. Now people are saying that $1,000 is the correct price for an entry-level AR. That sounds like madness to me. This may not be the most practical configuration for an AR, but at that price point, it's okay for this just to live on as a novelty that's fun to shoot because you probably don't have any other rifles with a full rifle length sock, 16 inch barrel, rifle length gas system. It's just different and interesting, and that's what a lot of people are looking for. That doesn't mean you couldn't turn this into something a little more competitive with other modern AR platforms. Maybe we need to do a dissipator modernization project. I don't know, let me know if you wanna see that. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. TFB TV is supported by our sponsors, Ventura Munitions and Top Gun Supply. Please check them out because they make these videos possible. We're also supported directly by our viewers via Subscribestar and Utreon, aka Player. You gotta say it French because they spelled it French. It's not my fault. There are links to both of those in the video description. If you join up, you'll be eligible for giveaways. You get to watch the Q&A series that James and I and Luke and some other people do. It's a good time. See you guys on the next video.